All right, here we go. We're in the vehicle, which means I have a few upgrades. Let's go ahead and get to a spot and then talk about our shelter. Okay, so here we are, we're at a campsite. We have the truck today. I have a few upgrades that actually finally got accomplished. We have new seat covers and we have our lifted struts from Rough Country and new tires. Let's go ahead and check those out and then we will talk about our base camp. I want a legit base camp, something I can take my vehicle out of and bring back to. So, let's get her done. Okay, so we're in the woods right here, and I have two trees right here. There's one, there's one behind me. I'm thinking I want to do some type of semi-permanent base camp. I want to be off the ground. So I'm thinking we do some type of raised shelter, about the same height as the truck roof. Underneath here, end up having an open area with a bench seat, and maybe a fire pit out in front of me. This way I can come and go as I please. I can drive out, come back. It's not going to interfere with my shelter. It's not even attached to my truck. Along with that, I'm off the ground and the heat and smoke will rise, keeping the bugs away. Now, gotta figure out how to do it. Okay, so the second most important thing is it's not going to impede the movement of my doors. But the most important thing is, will it hold my weight? I don't know. And there we go.
I want to combine some concepts. Last week I made a hasty bipod where I simply went around it and then I wrapped it once and I wrapped it once. Here I'm going to make traditional bipods to hold the opposite end up while we land it across our spacer or our cross member there. The weight will be distributed down those columns and into my bipods. Okay, so the beauty of having your vehicle at a campsite is you can leave when you want. Okay, so check this out. On the way up here, I passed by a field. It's probably a good thousand yards or so through those trees over there. And to be honest, I'm contained right here. I don't want to walk around. But if I take my vehicle over there, I noticed in that field, there's a bunch of wild sumac, okay? Now this is not poison sumac. This sumac right here has these purple berries on them. And if you touch them to your tongue, it's almost like 
citrusy, kind of like pink lemonade. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go back there, get a bunch of those berries, and we're going to soak them in water and try to create some type of cold infusion and draw that pink lemonade flavor into that water. And i got a plan for that later. Here we go again. All right, tarp shelter's up. And I've done this a hundred times. All we did was we run a ridge line from the tree that's centered on our stretcher bed, did a bowline, passed a bite through there, created a marline spike hitch quick release. Ran that bad boy all the way across to another tree about 15 feet away. Locked it off using an improvised trucker's hitch or rope tackle. From there we tossed our tarp over top and then simply tied our loops together. One, two, three, four. Outstanding.
kind of like pink lemonade, but not as sweet. I'm going to add something to this later on, but we'll come back to this. There's aspen bark from that down aspen over there. I'm just going to go ahead and try to fold it inside of itself and make it into a bowl, what resembles a bowl, and work around, manipulate with my thumbs. And then we'll put the smaller or the finer stuff inside of that and we'll manipulate that a little bit too. Get all those fine fibers all exposed there. There's a ferro rod and we'll light this bad boy. There we go. Okay, so I want to go ahead and make a hasty tripod. I got three poles, made a loop out of a fisherman's knot. So all we're going to do is we're going to slide this over top of these three poles, and then I'm going to go ahead and spin that center one until it tightens up. I'm going to take a loop, and I'm going to pass it over the stick, and then pull the string through it, and create a running bowlin. This will hold on to my toggle. I'm going to run that through the bail of my pot.
Okay, so we got good news and bad news. Good news is that the bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers survived. Bad news is the cheese sticks, or well, the bacon wrapped cheese sticks, did not. So I was forced to eat all of them. All right, here we go. Bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers stuffed with cream cheese. Oh my God. That is the best. The best. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Need something to wash this down with. You got that sumac. Catch you all in a few. And we'll go ahead and take our sumac and we'll add some vodka to it. Give it that kick. Let's go ahead and try this again. Bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers stuffed with cream cheese and a sumac tincture. So think about this, adding vodka or any alcohol to wild plants and edibles creates a medicinal or a tincture. In reality, it's a sumac cocktail and I'm gonna enjoy it. Not bad, so here we go. Mm. That is outstanding. I'm going to wash it down with my sumac cocktail. No 1.5% uh, IPAs on my channel. Cheers. <sighs> um, a lot of things happening here. A lot of things coming up. I talked about my knife last week. I have a potential drop date. That would be September 24th, but that's like two weeks out. So between now and then, I'm sure that I'll actually post it on Facebook or Instagram. Um, if you're not on my Corpus Corner Facebook or Corpus Corner Instagram, you need to get there because a lot of stuff's happening here in the next few weeks or even months. Um, you're also going to get reminders of videos as well as updates of what I'm doing, where I'm going. I know people are getting wore out over me posting the videos two and three days later. Well, here's why. I've done this experiment now for approximately 15 weeks. And for some reason, my, well, not for some reason. My theory is YouTube just bought a bunch of people or stole a bunch of people from Twitch. They brought them over here because they want to get into the live stream video gaming. So they're going to push that 100%. So how do they make up that revenue? They flood our channels with commercials, and I know some of you told me there's 25-minute commercials on there, and I apologize for that. There's nothing that I can do. Um, I've talked to them about that, and they say, we can advertise how we want. Well, there you go. What happens is people turn my channel off and others. They get wore out, and they're done. So we just get like this less and less and less views. Now, I don't hold a full-time job anymore. This is my full-time job. So I look at this as the big picture. If you were a business owner, and I said, no longer advertise, we're gonna take half your salary or half your paycheck every week for 16 weeks, and you better be happy because I don't wanna hear about it. You would be irate and effing pissed. And you would do whatever you could to get the advertising back up, and you would investigate all means at your disposal to figure out what's going on. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I conducted these experiments, and I see now that if I do not advertise, if I do not promote, the new norm for me and several other YouTubers is one-third to half views if you're lucky. Your subs make up between 7 and 10% of your views. So if you have 100,000 views, between 7 and 10%, that's 7,000 to 10,000 are only subs. The other 90,000 come from unsubscribers or non-subscribers, sorry. People that saw it in the feed. And I could easily cater to that feed. I choose not to. I'm trying to bridge that gap and bring my subscribers in. That's why I'm going to push the video for two or three days. Because believe it or not, I get hundreds of emails and texts every single week about people who are mad saying they have no idea that I dropped the video. So I'm going to do my utmost for my subscribers. Now, people don't like that. People get irritated by that. And I apologize. But until I just stop caring about my subscribers, I'm going to keep pushing and driving for them no matter what.
One thing I'm toying with is the possibility of doing some sort of live stream. Now, hear me out. It's not going to be a live stream where I'm sitting in my kitchen and we're talking about bushcraft and survival. That's never going to happen. Um, I don't do videos in my backyard, and I'm not going to do them from my kitchen. Um, but say I'm doing some type of overlanding, I could pull over and talk about it before I go. That way you get some sort of highlights before the video drops. And that way you get a reminder as well. Um, but here's my problem with that. Most people, subs and people in general, can't sit down and watch the video when it drops because they're busy. I understand that. They watch it two, three, four days later. It's already pulled from the feed and they hope they can find it. A live stream would be actually worse. People are at work. People are at school. People are picking up kids. You know, so the possibility of people seeing an actual live stream as is live would be very difficult. Um, I've seen a couple guys with a million subs get a whopping 2,000 people in there, okay, because people just couldn't do it. So I don't want to waste your time or mine. I'll have to actually sit down and think about it. Um, I may need to invoke the Huntsman. Oh, yes, the Huntsman. And I'll stop right there because if you say his name three times, he appears, or is it five times in a mirror? I don't know. What are those? Was that Candyman? Anyway, we'll stop right there. But I may need to get this figured out just so I could connect more with my audience. So let me know what you think about that. It's supposed to rain tonight around 3 o'clock in the morning, so I need to get up in that shelter and close her up. So let's head up to the shelter, hop in that bad boy, check her out, and then I want to be done. That way I can tie that other corner down and hit the rack. So typical raised bed, um, we're off the ground. It's the same sleeve I've used this last video. I'm actually checking this bad boy out because it's supposed to be a prototype for self-reliance outfitters. I am happy with this. Um, it will replace my 55 gallon drum liners with my garbage bags or my, yeah, my drum liners. So I'm happy with this. Um, long drop for an overnighter, but we're secure. We're tied off when these bipods right here and we're locked off to that log. So I'm happy. Catch you all in the morning. down there. Oh my god. You up here. High and dry. Nest Cafe. Tastes like crap, but it gets the job done. Okay, let's talk about our shelter. We have an elevated bed, elevated shelter in the woods, okay? This end over here, we have two bipods, legit bipod lashes, securing both of my poles to my stretcher bed. This end over here, we have a horizontal bar or a log with two columns. All of it is attached to our tree, and you saw me earlier that it holds my weight. Everything is being pushed into those columns, into the ground, and into our bipods here and here. On top, simple A-frame shelter with a ridge line running across to our trees. From there, we simply just wrapped our tarp. Now, the one thing I would like to do in the future is lift up that tarp 
and then fully expand it on both ends. So it will completely cover my seating area down here. And then maybe push this bench back and have a small table right here. I think that'd be cool. Okay, from there we went ahead and we created our bench seats. All we did was we used a simple windscreen that we used to block wind in front of our fire and combine that with two logs. And we have a bench. So now we can sit right here, enjoy our coffee, watch our fire. And there you go, overland camping and building a semi-permanent base camp in the woods. Another one for the books. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon Influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. And if you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.